1991, South Africa became the first country to grant legal protection to great white sharks. Since then, shark viewing and cage diving have become a major tourist industry with more than 80,000 visitors a year. That is, until 2017, when cage diving operators noticed a sudden decline in the number of sightings of great white sharks in False Bay. False Bay is an aggregation site for great white sharks and from 2010 to 2016, great white sharks have been sighted in False Bay an average of 205 times each year. In 2018, the sharks were spotted just 50 times and in 2019, they were none sighted. False Bay is just 13 miles southwest of Cape Town and is home to 27 different species of shark, ray and chimera. Most of these are potential prey for the great whites, especially the hound shark, bronze whalers and guitar sharks. They also like to eat a tasty fur seal pup. There is an island in the bay called Seal Island, which is inhabited by Cape fur seals. The great whites congregate around the island, ready for when their pups take their first swim. They strike by swimming from depth up towards the pup. The momentum of the shark carries them out of the water which gives amazing photo opportunities of these awesome creatures. Great whites can be seen all along the coast of South Africa, including Gansby, which is around 100 miles from Cape Town and which is another good place to go shark spotting. It is estimated that there is anything from 500 to 900 sharks and they all belong to one population which move from one site to another. A study on the genetics of the South African population of great white sharks has revealed that there are only approximately 300 breeders. The minimum number of breeders needed to avoid inbreeding is around 500, so the population was at risk even before they started to disappear. It is thought that longline fishing that occurs around hundreds of miles off the South African coastline is one of the reasons for their decline. Since 2013, Fishing boats have set up these long lines with up to 2,000 baited hooks on or near the seabed. They target smaller shark species such as soup fin and smooth hound sharks, which are a favoured prey species of the great white. It is believed that stocks of these sharks are so small that they are on the brink of collapse. This lack of prey may have led to the starvation of juvenile great whites and driven the older great whites elsewhere. There is also a concern that the fishery may be illegally hooking and killing young great whites and hammerhead sharks. Most sharks are vulnerable to overfishing because they have few young, mature slowly and have a long lifespan. Great whites have been estimated to live as long as 70 years and soup fin sharks can live to 55. Bizarrely, the sharks that are caught in this way are exported. The biggest market is Australia where it is sold as flake and made into fish and chips. The fins are sold to the Asian market to be used in shark fin soup. Another reason for a drop in number of the great whites is due to humans wanting to swim off beaches safely. Between 1978 and 2008, approximately 1,063 great whites were caught in nets that protect swimmers from shark attacks. This is part of the shark protection measures by the KwaZulu-Natal Shark Board Maritime Centre of Excellence. The problem is that many of the sharks die in these nets. Depending on the shark species, only 1 to 65% are released alive. In 1999, in an effort to reduce the number of nets used, which also catch other marine animals besides sharks, drumlines were introduced. These are baited hooks that specifically target sharks and aim to cull sharks as a method of preventing them from swimming close to the shore. On average, between 2013 and 2017, 17 great white sharks died per year on these drum lines in the province of Kuala Zoo-Natal. That is shocking for any animal, but for a protected species, it is quite astounding. This may explain the gradual decline in the numbers of great white sharks along the South African coast. But why was there such a sudden drop in numbers seen in 2017 from False Bay and Gansby? Well, the possible reason is intriguing. Although great white sharks are top predators, orcas are known as super predators and enjoy eating the livers of sharks. Shark livers are very large 
and comprise up to one third of the total mass of an individual and contain lots of lipids, which orcas like to eat. Since 2009, there has been an increased presence of orcas in False Bay. These orcas were believed to be preying upon marine mammals. But in 2015, two orcas, which have been named Port and Starboard due to the way in which their fins droop over, were spotted in the bay and their appearance coincided with the discovery of several broad-nosed seven-gill sharks which had been preyed upon in a very distinctive way. To get to a shark's liver, the orca has to apply such a huge force to the pectoral fins of the shark that it ruptures the pectoral girdle. Not surprisingly, the seven gill sharks decided to move from False Bay and were then absent for over a month. This was not an isolated event and occurred again in 2016. In 2017, the bodies of five great white sharks were found washed up on the beaches around Gansby. Again, the livers had been removed and again it coincided with the presence of orcas. It also corresponded to an increase in sightings of great whites in Mossel Bay, a little further down the coast. Orcas are known in other parts of the world to prey upon sharks, but it is the first time it has been observed in South Africa. For example, in California in 2009, 17 tagged great white sharks suddenly disappeared, which was linked to the presence of orcas and it is believed that they may stay away from an area for up to a year once orcas have passed through their hunting ground. In January this year, there have been sightings of a pod of orcas in False Bay, but only one great white has been seen. As yet, it is unclear as to the reason why orcas are becoming more frequent visitors to this part of the world. One theory is that it is due to a decline in their usual prey, such as pelagic fish and sharks, due to overfishing so they are coming into more coastal waters in search for food. More research needs to be done to gain a better understanding of the reasons why orcas are doing this and the ecological impact of the change in the behaviour of the sharks they are preying upon. The disappearance of a top predator has huge consequences on the food web. For example, in Gansby, the seal population has increased, as have the number of bronze whaler sharks. The bronze whaler sharks are also a top predator and the increase in their numbers means that their prey is being eaten in vast quantities. The ecological balance is being disturbed and could have far-reaching consequences. To help protect the great whites more effectively, strategies need to be put in place to prevent them from being caught in long-line fishing and when attempting to make the beaches safe for swimmers. With such a dramatic drop in great white numbers off the coast of South Africa and in other parts of the world, every awesome creature needs to be protected.